In this video, we're going to talk about what the consumer price index is, how it is calculated, and what it's used for. And then we're going to discuss about the difference between the CPI and the GDP deflator. We use price indices to track the path of prices over time. How do we build one? Well, here are five steps. Number one, first, you need to define a set of goods or a basket to track. Two, you record the prices of goods in the basket at the period that you are interested in. Number three, you calculate how much it would cost you to purchase that basket at current prices. Four, you need to define a reference point or base period. We're going to use that for comparisons of different values of the cost of the basket across time. And then you compute the price index for as many periods as you have collected data. Let's take the reference point of the period T. To find the value of the price index in the period T, what we're going to do is we're going to divide the cost of the basket at this time period T by the cost of the basket in the base year. Then we multiply it by 100. What that value of PT is, is going to be a comparison of how large or how small the cost of the basket is compared to the cost of the basket in the base period. We do this, um, dividing it by the cost of the basket in the base year, to have a unitless uh, index. We're not using dollars here anymore, or yen. Um, we are using a simple index, all compared to and based off the cost of the basket in the base year. Now that you know how to build a price index, let's talk about two of the most widely used price indices, the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, and the GDP deflator. Now first, let's talk about what is in their respective baskets. In the CPI, we have everything that an average U.S. consumer would purchase. On the deflator, we have the entirety of U.S. productions in goods and services. For that reason, you'll find some differences between them. The average U.S. consumer um, does buy imports. Imports uh, will not be counted in the GDP deflator. On the other hand, on the deflator, you will in include a lot of different products that the average consumer does not buy. A prominent example is capital goods. Let's uh, have an example here, a tractor. The average US consumer does not buy tractors and therefore it will not be in the CPI, but we can find it in the GDP deflator. Another difference is that the basket of goods is fixed in the CPI or, you know, almost fixed. Um, the BLS does change and update the basket of goods and services uh, once in a while. Well, the basket of goods in the GDP deflator is dynamic, so it changes all the time. The idea of the CPI is that we want to track um, the prices that are faced by different consumers across long periods of time, and we need a basket that is somewhat fixed to do that. That way we can use it to compare the prices today to say the prices in 1940. Uh, the GDP deflator, on the other hand, uh, has a basket that is always changing uh, because GDP is always changing. U.S. production varies from year to year, and the composition of goods and services we produce also changes. And for that reason, the basket would always change. Now, it's hard to declare a winner here. These two are very different, and we use them for very different purposes. Now, most of the time when we're using the consumer price index is we're trying to focus on consumers and comparisons across time. If we're interested, for example, in adjusting contracts um, according to um, you know, the purchasing power of consumers, then we use the CPI. 
On the other hand, if we need a notion uh, or an aggregate measure of prices across the entire economy, well, we want to use the GDP deflator because it encompasses all of the economy. To illustrate how the definitions of both the consumer price index and the GDP deflator uh, affect how we measure inflation, let's look at these two time series. In red, you have the CPI, and in blue, you have the GDP deflator. As you can see throughout time, these two are not the same. Right here in the early 1970s, the CPI measured a lower level of inflation than the GDP deflator. Well, over here in the late 80s and early 90s, the CPI measure higher levels of inflation than the GDP deflator. Now, differences in how these two are defined are, re are the reason why we see these discrepancies. Now, remember, inflation is just a measurement of what happens in reality, and we're measuring with two different tools, so we don't expect these to be the same. Let me provide an example. Let's go here to the late 70s and early 80s. During that time, oil prices skyrocketed. At the same time, the United States was not a major producer of oil. So all the oil that we got in the United States at that time was an import. Because lots of consumers buy oil derivatives like gasoline, we saw a huge spike in the cost of living according to the CPI. Now that spike was much larger than the spike in the GDP deflator because oil was an import. So we can see that two different tools of measuring price levels defined differently will give us different measurements of inflation. And that is okay. It depends at what situation uh, we're looking at um, and we could pick either the CPI or the GDP deflator, depending in that circumstance. Now let's take a minute to practice some calculations to help us remember how we build a price index. This activity um, asks for your responses on Top Hat. So please take a minute and go to Top Hat and answer my questions there. Now, the CPI basket is going to consist of only two goods, beef and chicken. As uh, calculated by all of our surveys, the typical household consumes 10 pounds of beef and 20 pounds of chicken. As you will see on the right, you have a table giving you the price of chicken and beef over the years 2014, 15, and 16. 2014 is our base year. So please pause the video and compute the CPI in 2015 and um, calculate the inflation rate from 2015 to 2016. Now let's compute the CPI in 2015. Again, the CPI is the cost of the basket. So we need to figure out what the cost of beef is and the cost of chicken. To do that, we need to remember that we are buying 10 pounds of beef and 20 pounds of chicken. Now those, according to our table up above, cost in 2015 $5 for beef and $5 for chicken. When we add those two values, we get that the cost of the basket is 150. Now to calculate the value of the CPI in 2015, we need to take the ratio of the cost of the basket that we just calculated which is 150, divided by the cost of the basket in the base year. Now, just like we did the cost of the basket in 2015, I've calculated the cost of the basket in 2014, and that is $120.
the ratio between the two gives us the value of the price index for the year 2015. And that value is 125. And remember, we use this kind of calculation to make sure that our index is not in any unit um, that can confuse us when comparing across time or across countries. To calculate the inflation rate using the CPI, we need to calculate the CPI in 2016. So let's go ahead and do that. In that case, what we're doing is we're going to calculate the cost of our purchases of beef according to the prices in 2016 and chicken. To find that the cost of the basket in 2016 is $210. Then, just like we did in the previous year, we take the ratio of the cost of the basket in our uh, current year of analysis, 2016, divided by the cost of the basket in the base year. Our value for CPI is therefore 175. Now, the inflation rate is just the percentage change in the price index. So the percentage change in the price index is, in our case, 175, which is the value of the CPI in 2016, minus 125, which is the value of the CPI in 2015, divided by the value of CPI in 2015 times 100. And we get 40%. What that 40% means is that from 2015 to 2016, prices have increased by 40% as measured by the CPI. This is our last scenario. Uh, for each of the cases, A, B, C, please tell me what happens to the CPI and the GDP deflator. Again, pause this video, answer these questions on top hat. All right, let's take a look at A. We're looking here at the price of Frappuccinos. Because these are goods that consumers buy, it's in the CPI, and because it was produced in the United States, GDP deflator also rise. Now let's think of B. For B, we're looking at the price of industrial tractors. Industrial tractors, if produced at Illinois, would count in the GDP deflator, but it will not be in the CPI because industrial tractors are usually things that a consumer will not buy. And lastly, let's look at some imported jeans. So the price of these Italian jeans increase in the US, um, assuming again that we are looking at our monies and that uh, consumers in general in the United States would buy these kind of important genes. Uh, the CPI would increase, but the GDP deflator would not because this is an import.